Good morning, welcome back. Got a few familiar faces on the boat today. Quinn, you remember him? He shot his first tuna. What's up? We look over, Quinn has his first tuna. Steven and I erupt. We lose it. Let's go! New meat. Whatever his name will be, will be the first fish that he misses. So I'll just go no name. For right now, he's no name. And old Steve, the luckiest mother I've ever met. I'm gonna have to bleep that one out. Anyways, corner, day one, out. What's up guys, welcome back. We are doing another voiceover on this Bahamas episode. Here you have Charlie, one of his first times ever trying to use a pole spear. And you could tell he rushes his kick. It's his first time free diving. So one of the first things I wanna do is I wanna show him a slower, better approach on how you want to try to hunt a hogfish. You can see that as I line up on this hogfish, I think we've all been there. They like to go back and forth and do what Rass do, and he never gives me that shot, so I'm patient. If you stay patient and you try to come at them from a different angle, eventually they'll turn and look at you, boom. Easy, simple, you don't need to kick hard. Here's a quick one of Steven, light work. Some people really like going and making sure they secure the fish before coming up. For me, when I'm in the Bahamas, I prefer just to let that fish dangle. I've seen sharks come in from a distance and I'd rather not deal with that and have my hands near the fish, but that's each person's prerogative. There we go, Charlie. Charlie ends up being able to shoot that hog. That's his first hog fish. Not a bad shot in the face. Of course, Steven doubles up while he's at it. Little yellow jack action. Nice job, buddy. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh. Right in the face. Look at that shot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you heard, I was pretty stoked. Charlie had never gone free diving before. He is a diver, uh, you know, for South Carolina, but he does not free dive. So I was really excited he was able to shoot that fish. And of course, I can't pass up taking a nice yellow jack. They're one of my favorite fish to eat in the Bahamas, amazing sashimi. So I had to take that fish. On this, I'm gonna let you just listen to the sounds of the ocean, but I really wanted to sit and see if I can get this massive school of mangrove snappers to come a little closer. All right, so you can see here that Steven dropped down, shot a nice hog underneath the ledge. But in the process, we actually found a black grouper. So now I'm climbing up underneath and trying to see where that grouper went. Um, ideally, we're gonna let Charlie shoot this fish. Uh, it's his first time free diving, first time in the Bahamas, but he's putting out 20, 30 foot dives, no problem. And I find the fish, I locate it, and I point and I leave the pole spear down there for him. You can see I'm kind of pointing to where the fish is, but Charlie was excited. He didn't get the breath that he wanted. He had to abort the dive. Watch him do it. Steven, take this flashlight, try to find it. It moved to the left a little bit. All right, so 
Unfortunately, after making a couple dives on this fish, we ended up spooking it. And so now we're looking inside this ledge to see where the black grouper might be sitting. Eventually I find it and I put the flashlight on it. You can see his face sitting right there. So I come up ready to show Charlie exactly where that fish is hanging out. So we make a drop. The flashlight is still sitting perfectly on the fish. I'm now holding the flashlight and I wait for Charlie to come down. He comes down with the loaded spear and he takes his shot. He pulls on it and immediately the fish comes out. <laughs> Way to tear him out, bro. Right in the mouth, too. Good. Let's go. Thank you. Bro, that was sick. Oh. Dude, I got it all on film of it going right into its mouth. First time spear fishing, and the guy gets a black grouper with a bull spear. <laughs> Thank you, CJ. Oh, sorry. Hold it up, Bubba. Hey. That was okay, wild. buddy. Midday update. Just had a starboard engine scare. Started knocking a little bit, but we also have a few nice fish in the boat. Got him. Say hello to Mr. Yellowfin. Hello to Mr. Black. We got absolutely schooled by a 60 pounder. Made this guy look silly. All right, and we're back underwater. So after we finished celebrating Charlie's first black grouper, that was awesome. Boom. Nice male hogfish, stoned it. Great shot by Steven. He ignored the small black grouper and was rewarded with a really nice hogfish. This is what you think of when you think of the Bahamas. A beautiful male, unreal fish. Oh yeah. So get this, I saw him first. Yeah. And a black go into that hole. Yeah. His weight breathing up. Saw the black, he's too tiny. I know, I watched the whole thing. That's a stud. Steven's on this one little corner of this spot that I have. It's an awesome spot. Usually we find a lot of grouper. And in this case, Steven found one that's going to come home with us. Once again, Steven shoots and secures the fish all on one dive. Beautiful yellowfin grouper. Great dive. So one of the things I want to point out here is you see how Steven has this pole spear loaded. He doesn't have it twisted. You can see how it's bent a little bit. Whenever you're shooting a standard pole spear, you really need to uh, twist it. But he shot that grouper, stoned it or spined it. It didn't go all the way through. The slip tip was off and Steven ended up shooting it with just the injector rod. You can see as he's coming up now, the slip tip is not engaged. You, you can lo look at it right there. It's just the injector rod in that fish. So luckily he had a great shot, spined the fish and was able to reload on the same dive and then put the injector rod into the fish. Shot. That wasn't the same fish. No. The other one's still in there. Oh. Okay, so let's put this one on the boat. Oh, <laughs> we'll get the other one. That was sick. <laughs> that was so sick. Yeah. He stoned it, and then we had shot it a second time. Good you go. So as you can see here, it's a pretty elaborate cave system with tons of little nooks and crannies. You can see the fins sort of moving there. I tried to look from another angle. This is actually one of the most fun things about diving in the Bahamas for me is trying to find different angles and different ways to find a fish when they're hidden underneath the cave structure. I usually bring two or three different flashlights because if I didn't have a flashlight, there would be zero chance of me being able to see this fish. But now after I've scoped out the, the scene 
and figured out where the fish is. I'm coming to the surface so I can tell Steven exactly where that fish is. There's the three entrances, right? There's the one that you saw his mouth open, the one to the right of it, the one that you just, the, the first one you saw me stick my head and I went underneath, that's one that has his mouth. Go down, yeah, go down there, not loaded, stick your head in, find him first, figure out how you're gonna do the pole spear. I did stick my head in and I could only see that part, there's nothing. So if he's not in that part, I can't see anywhere else. <sighs> now if you do the part that this one is, Right here, look. The original hole that you looked in, you won't be able to find them. The only way that you can see this fish is if you go through where the flashlight is and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna point, okay? All right, so after I come up with a game plan for Steven, I'm going back down. Been under the hole where the flashlight was. Yeah, his body's where the flashlight is. So when you get up and look, you have to look up back that way. It's like back into the right a little bit, you know? I'm just gonna go and load it. Go ahead, loaded. Hey, the angle's gonna be really tough because he's up and in, so the back of the spear might get caught up. We might have to take the middle section out. Do it first as you do it, but we might have to take the middle section out and then, and then tie the band. And here we see the grouper spook out. Unfortunately, the angle just wasn't working to our favor, and we ended up losing this fish. That was a really nice 50 pound black, but sometimes that's the way it goes. As we're swimming back to the boat, I saw a mutton snapper, so I decided to lace it up. Got him. Wasn't a big one, but I love the hunt of mutton snappers. Just so much fun. This is actually a pretty cool spot that we found. It's only in 10, 15 feet of water, nice little ledges. So I decided to play footsies and start messing with that nurse shark. This place was covered in small size muttons. So I took another shot, was able to stone this one. in the day we are at our 18 fish limit that's it no more no mas time for a few beers and a sunset short quick day of diving yeah it was a really long night last night too but we're gonna hang out pretty close we're gonna go to some of our favorite hogfish spots maybe go look for some african pompano a little later as you can see here the day ended up getting cut early we got chased away from the dive spots by a huge storm but on our way from running from the storm, we are able to find a couple spots. And there we go, Chaz. Chaz has never gone spearfishing before and had been trying to get a hogfish. He ended up shooting one. You can see he's stoked, fist pumping the whole way. Charlie's gotten a little bit better over the last day. You can see he's being a little bit more patient. Boom, stones it. Nice job, buddy. Nice job, nice job. Here we are again. Charlie's chasing down another hog. He's starting to get the hang of it, but he ended up shooting this hogfish a little bit on the low side. Wait for him to turn, wait for him to turn. He's right here. After he shot this fish, it ended up going into a hole and getting completely silted out. So eventually we're gonna have to call this one and look for somewhere else. We actually shortened this pole spear here and turned it into a seven foot spear so that we could try to find 
another hogfish that we had chased underneath this ledge. He was actually able to get a pretty good shot because it was a condensed version of the Bantam. We got another nice little hogfish. So after a little bit of diving, we decided to have a little relaxation. and went to one of my favorite spots in the entire Bahamas. If you know where this is, try not to comment below, keep it, keep it hidden. But I love coming here, sharks, stingrays, we fillet the fish. Uh, we're actually able to hang out and just get away from the bugs that would be back at the dock. Eventually we run back and we'll go back to where we're supposed to be. Don't Welcome to our last and final day of spearfishing. Everyone's throwing up because they had too much to drink last night. Oh, that's on video. It's probably 10, 12, it's five, 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 Happens on the last day of every trip. Yeah, we actually How are we doing, Chunder Mountain? Yeah. Hey, what's up? How's it going? So as I'm checking out these small coral reef heads, I'm looking for small grouper, maybe even some of the porgy that swim around. I really like to hunt these porgies when we're in the shallow reef, but I didn't see any here. And then we have Quinn, who hadn't shot much this trip yet. He shot the tuna in Costa Rica, but he finally got a hogfish. Quinn with the hog, let's go! Woo! broken ankles and everything. There's what I was looking for. Nice little porgy on a pole spear. As usual, this part of the Bahamas always has sharks ready to take our fish. So keeping a team ready to poke some sharks is important. Yo, I just stabbed him and he left. Boom, another nice porgy. Porgies are usually out in these grass flats, but these, these porgies were hiding underneath rocks, so I kept looking for them. I was able to find a couple. Great shot placement right through the cheek. <laughs> yeah, look at that shot, boy. Hold on, I want a picture with that guy. And we're back to looking underneath rocks and trying to find something underneath in these little cave and cavern systems. I'd seen a big hog go in here. It, I chased it in off the flats. Couldn't see it on this dive. Eventually I found him, poked his head out, big mistake. Laced him up, got him. Oh, right in the eye. Yeah, the slip tip didn't engage, but I really hurt him bad and ended up cleaning up the job right there. Found another small squirrely mutton. Again, boom, stoned him. That was actually a great shot. And then this weird thing happened. I picked up a sea cucumber to show the boys and as I dropped it this barracuda decided to put it in its mouth so that was bizarre got another attempt at a hogfish swing and a miss it's part of the learning curve for these guys diving with pole spears is a little difficult especially if you're not used to diving and this is the first time you've ever dove before Yeah. Let's go. That's a solid boy. There we go, Chaz. Yeah. 
And there we have it. Chaz ended up shooting another hogfish. And that's how this episode ends. I really appreciate you guys watching. Comment below if there's anything you'd like me to touch on that I can do better. Uh, we, we're going to continue doing the voiceovers since everyone likes them so much and people are able to get some good information out of them. Again, if you liked what you saw, comment below, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks, guys.